This presentation will discuss how to manage diseases commonly encountered in a saltwater aquarium. Reef safe treatment options will also be discussed. On the screen, you will see a long list of diseases which can sometimes be managed in a reef aquarium. You are probably asking yourself, if these diseases can be managed, then why bother to quarantine? The answer is disease management is not always a successful strategy, and certain fish are better able to fight off parasites than others. You might lose half of your fish to a particular pathogen, while others survive. Also, as you will see in the next slide, there are certain diseases that you can encounter that are very difficult to manage. Here is a list of diseases which can be very difficult to manage. Probably the most infamous is marine velvet disease, which can quickly overwhelm a fish's natural defenses due to the sheer number of parasites produced. These often overwhelm a fish's natural immune system in a closed-off environment such as an aquarium. You'll also notice that flukes become unmanageable once they reach a fish's eyes. Also, there are certain diseases which are more likely to negatively impact certain species. Clownfish are very susceptible to Brooklynella, and Chromis and Antheus have a very difficult time managing uronema parasites. Other fish are more likely to withstand these diseases. So why aren't fish dying in mass from parasites found in the ocean? Could it be because there are about a gazillion gallons of water diluting those parasites? Even the largest public aquariums are still closed systems that cannot compare to the vastness of the world's oceans. However, even those with small home aquariums can utilize tools which will reduce the number of parasites found in the water. Fewer parasites in the water mean less for your fish to deal with, and that gives their immune system a better shot at winning the ongoing battles. Diatom filters and UV sterilizers can be used to siphon out and eliminate free-swimming parasites from the water column. Ozone and hydrogen peroxide utilize oxidation to outright kill free swimmers. An oxidator infuses pure oxygen into the water and has been likened to putting an oxygen mask on a fish to help them breathe easier. This is important because oftentimes parasites attack a fish's gills first and can asphyxiate them. Lastly, if possible, lowering aquarium water temperature and or salinity can help manage parasites and worms in four different ways. There will be fewer parasites in the water. It will increase available oxygen in the water. It will reduce metabolic demands on a sick fish and it will decrease damage from a fish's immune response. Fish don't eat flake food and pellets in the wild. Since a fish's gut floor is what fuels its immune system, it is very important to duplicate what fish eat in their natural environment. Also, live foods are always a good option. Anything that contains bacteria which benefits a fish's gut, which in turn boosts their natural immune system. You can give your fish's immune systems an additional boost by soaking probiotics, vitamins, amino acids, and beta-glucan in the fish food. Final thoughts. The key to disease management is keeping the overall number of parasites down while simultaneously boosting your fish's immune systems to deal with any parasites that survive. Proper nutrition is very important. A fish's gut microbiota is what fuels the natural immune system. There is some anecdotal evidence that using live rock instead of dry rock seeds an aquarium with natural predators of parasites sooner rather than later. Herbal remedies may boost a fish's immune system and thicken their slime coat to better withstand parasites. And there is at least one peer-reviewed study now which demonstrated that garlic possesses antimicrobial properties against a range of disease-causing agents, including fish parasites. So, food-soaking garlic may be a good idea after all. Thank you for watching this video. See links in the comments section for more detailed information on fish disease management and join us on my forum for all reef aquarium related discussion.